Longtime viewers of our channel know that I don't particularly enjoy the topic of black holes. It's not that I avoid the subject in my videos. After all, for a popular science channel about physics, that's practically impossible. But I tend to steer clear of black hole discussions unless absolutely necessary and for good reasons. Firstly, our understanding of black holes is still quite limited, both in terms of their internal structure and their physical nature. Everything that happens beneath the event horizon is a complete mystery, and even our knowledge of what occurs outside it is incomplete, with many aspects still hotly debated among specialists. Most importantly, what we do know about black holes is almost entirely formulated in the language of rather complex mathematics. Translating this knowledge into more comprehensible terms is a highly non-trivial task. The translations found on the internet are often far from successful, leading to several misconceptions about black hole physics in the public mind. It's important to clarify that I'm discussing the generally accepted theory of black holes, which reflects the consensus among most scientists. This theory is based on scientific principles we are confident in, having repeatedly verified them through experiments and observations. However, the application of these theories to black holes is less certain. Our ideas about black hole physics lack critical experimental and observational confirmation, as black holes are exceedingly rare and extremely difficult to observe. It's astonishing that we've managed to learn anything about them at all. Let's start our video by addressing a misconception somewhat tangential to the other topics we'll cover today, but still relevant to what I've mentioned above. The belief that black holes are purely theoretical objects, that we haven't actually seen them, and therefore can't assert their existence in the universe. This claim is partially true. We indeed haven't seen black holes, but this doesn't prevent us from being certain of their existence and observing already identified objects of this type in space. A black hole, by definition, is invisible because it neither emits nor reflects light. Therefore, the only way to detect a black hole is by tracking its gravitational influence on other objects. For example, when a black hole is in a dense cloud of gas, it attracts the gas, drawing it inward. On its way to the black hole, the gas streams spiral into a vortex, similar to the whirlpools formed around a drain in a sink or bathtub. This cosmic whirlpool is known as an accretion disk. The inner layers of gas in these whirlpools move faster than the outer ones due to the conservation of angular momentum, and the resulting viscous friction converts some of the gas's kinetic energy into thermal energy, heating it up. This heated gas then emits electromagnetic radiation, which we can detect, though mostly in the X-ray range, invisible to the naked eye. The photographs of black holes actually depict the X-ray emission from the gas in their accretion disks, not the black holes themselves, which are, by definition, invisible. By observing these accretion disks, we can confidently infer the presence of a black hole at the center. Not all black holes form bright accretion disks, some are observed through their gravitational interactions with already visible objects, like other stars in binary systems. In such systems, stars orbit a common center of mass, and by studying their motion, we can determine the masses involved. Occasionally, we find stars behaving as part of a binary system with an unseen companion. If calculations show the invisible object has a mass exceeding three solar masses, it can only be a black hole. Supermassive black holes, like the one in the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star, influence many surrounding stars. Stars near this black hole, known as S stars, orbit it in elongated ellipses. By analyzing these orbits, scientists determined the central object's mass to be 4.3 million solar masses. Given that this immense mass is confined within a sphere no more than 45 astronomical units in diameter, scientists concluded it must be a black hole as anything else would have collapsed into a black hole under its gravity. There is ample observational evidence to support the existence of black holes, and skeptics need to propose alternative explanations for these compact, massive objects observed across the cosmos. Next, we'll address the second common myth, that black holes are exclusively extremely massive objects. This is not entirely true. The lightest known black holes are just over three solar masses, and theoretically, black holes with as little as 2.5 solar masses are possible. 
The average black hole in our region of the Milky Way has a mass around 10 solar masses. For comparison, massive stars can be much heavier. For instance, Betelgeuse is about 16.7 times the mass of the Sun, far more massive than many black holes in our galaxy. This makes sense, given that black holes form from the gravitational collapse of stars with masses starting from 20 to 30 solar masses. However, only a portion of the star's mass becomes the black hole, with the rest dispersing into space in a supernova explosion. Although stars with masses around 10 solar masses are rare, making black holes relatively massive objects by galactic standards, they are not extraordinarily so. There are exceptions, of course. Supermassive black holes with millions, billions, or even hundreds of billions of solar masses. These unprecedented cosmic giants are very rare typically found only in the centers of galaxies. If black holes aren't necessarily extremely massive, what is their defining characteristic? Many would say their extreme density, the small volume in which their mass is packed. This is generally true, but with important caveats. Firstly, we need to define the density of black holes. Density is mass divided by volume, but what should we consider as the volume of a black hole? Typically, it's the volume of the sphere defined by the event horizon, the region beyond which nothing can escape. If we consider density as the mass divided by this volume, it doesn't necessarily have to be extreme. For instance, stellar mass black holes have enormous densities, around 10 to the power of 20 kilograms per cubic meter, exceeding the density of atomic nuclei. To turn the sun into a black hole, it would need to be compressed to a radius of about three kilometers from its nearly 700,000 kilometer current radius. However, this isn't always the case. For example, the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star has a mass around five million solar masses or 10 to the power of 37 kilograms and a gravitational radius of about 13 million kilometers, resulting in a density of about a million kilograms per cubic meter only a thousand times denser than water. The gravitational radius is proportional to the mass of the black hole, meaning its volume is proportional to the cube of its mass, and thus density is inversely proportional to the square of the mass. For example, black holes with a billion solar masses have densities around 20 kilograms per cubic meter, 50 times less dense than water. The most massive black holes, with masses around 100 billion solar masses, have densities even lower than air. This means that to create a black hole, it's not necessary to compress matter to extreme densities. Simply gathering a significant amount of ordinary matter in a certain region of space will suffice. Furthermore, a black hole with a mass comparable to the estimated mass of the visible universe would have a radius similar to the visible universe's radius. Many scientists believe this is no coincidence and suggest we might be living inside a colossal black hole. The next common myth is that one can escape a black hole by accelerating. This misconception arises from the incorrect definition of a black hole as an object whose escape velocity equals the speed of light. More precisely, this definition is not exactly incorrect. Indeed, earlier we agreed to consider the surface of a black hole as the sphere with the gravitational radius, or Schwarzschild radius, which, as a reminder, is defined by the following formula. If we now recall the classical formula for the escape velocity, we see that substituting the speed of light in this expression gives us the same result, meaning that on the surface of a black hole, the escape velocity is indeed equal to the speed of light. Hence, it is often said that since nothing can move faster than the speed of light, it is impossible to achieve escape velocity and flee from a black hole. This is an intuitively understandable explanation, but it should not be taken literally. It can indeed give the impression that one could escape from a black hole by moving with acceleration. Indeed, imagine a rocket located somewhere below the event horizon of the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A star. Let's assume just below this boundary, where the freefall acceleration is about 1500 meters per second squared, meaning the force with which the black hole would pull each kilogram of the rocket's mass is about 1500 newtons. This is a lot, but not infinitely so. And theoretically, we can imagine an engine developing enough thrust to overcome the black hole's pull. 
Does this mean that a rocket with such an engine could escape the black hole? Actually, no. The point is that classical mechanical considerations no longer work in the space near the horizon. Everything happens somewhat differently there. How exactly? Well, this is described by rather complex mathematics that encompasses everything related to black holes. How can the situation be described, if we may say, in layman's terms? Here is an analogy. The gravitational field pulls inward not so much the objects themselves as the space in which they and the objects reside. The speed at which the space is sucked into the black hole is so great that no matter how fast the object moves within the space, where it cannot move faster than the speed of light, the space will be sucked into the black hole faster. And no matter how much the rocket tries to escape, it will not succeed. It should be noted that all this is theoretical, based on the equations of general relativity. This theory is well supported by experiments, and we are almost certain that everything should happen as described above. However, we can only be completely sure after conducting a direct experiment, which we have not yet conducted, and which, in principle, is impossible to conduct to obtain any intelligible results, as no one will be able to escape a black hole and tell us what happened inside. Another misconception about black hole physics related to attempts to describe them using classical logic is the following. Supposedly, no object can fall into a black hole from the point of view of an external observer, because as it approaches the event horizon, time, from the external observer's perspective, slows down and stops completely at the horizon. And once time is stopped, movement ceases, and the object appears to be suspended above the event horizon, never crossing it. This sounds logical, but only from a classical approach to describing mechanical processes in gravitational fields, where time and space are considered independent entities. However, in the theory of relativity, we consider processes in four-dimensional space-time, and the entire space-time is distorted by the black hole's gravitational field. We can use the same analogy as before. Even if our object is frozen in space due to the stopping of time, the space itself will be sucked into the black hole, and eventually, from the external observer's point of view, the object will fall into the black hole in finite time. However, the external observer will not see this, as the image of the falling object will be redshifted far beyond the visible spectrum. Let's move on to the next common misconception, which is that black holes are often depicted as gigantic cosmic vacuum cleaners, mercilessly sucking in everything that comes too close. Actually, this is true. Gravity doesn't joke around, and if you get close enough to a black hole, you will inevitably be sucked in. However, the same thing will happen if you get close enough to any massive celestial body. You will fall into it, and the results will be just as dire. In fact, at a distance of several gravitational radii from a black hole, it will affect you in the same way as any other body of the same mass, which, as we have seen above, is not that large for many black holes. For example, if the sun turned into a black hole, which according to modern understanding is impossible, the orbits of Earth and other planets in the solar system would remain unchanged. In general, turning the sun into a black hole would have no effect on the lives of Earth's inhabitants, except that we would stop receiving light and heat from the sun, and Earth would soon freeze. As for the advertised special effects like time dilation and such, they occur only in the immediate vicinity of a black hole, within a few gravitational radii of its center, while the gravitational radius of stellar mass black holes is only a few kilometers. So, there is nothing particularly terrifying about black holes, but they are of enormous interest to science, as black holes are far beyond our understanding of physics. And by observing them, we can learn new things and understand phenomena that currently remain a mystery to us.